Hello and welcome back to the channel. If you watched the previous episode of the Lake House build series, you would have seen us installing the zip wall sheathing on the lower level walls, along with building the first floor wall you see here in the background. If you haven't seen that episode, be sure to subscribe to the channel and check out the playlist to find it. In this episode, we continue building the first floor walls. This room will be our primary bedroom, and the wall will have a large 8 foot by 8 foot patio door, so it requires a large 3 ply LVL beam to carry the load of the roof trusses. We start by tacking the bottom plate to our chalk line, and then lay out the location for the studs and the patio door. The patio door will lead out to a large deck that will span the entire length of the house, so that we can access it from every room. If you have ever had to nail an LVL together, you know how dense the wood is. This Milwaukee nailer makes the job easy and with the bump fire option makes quick work of it. With the LVLs nailed into place, I can cut four jack studs, two for each side, that will go into supporting the LVL.
We pull the diagonal measurements to ensure the wall is square. This is a heavy wall with the triple LVL beam, so we wanted to lift this first thing in the morning when we were fresh and full of energy. We opted not to add the zip sheathing, as that would have added too much weight for us to lift. We lift it up enough to get the sawhorses under it, and then quickly realize we need to add a temporary top plate to hold the wall even with the LVL. I didn't want to add the second uh, full top plate at this point, as I want it to tie into the wall, other wall that is already up. We lift it up a little higher and then realize we didn't add the brace on the side. You will laugh when you see the size of the wood I grab and attach. I was so focused on lifting that I wasn't really paying attention to the length of it. Let me know in the comments section if you laughed out loud after seeing that. <laughs> I quickly replaced the short brace with one that was much longer and worked much better. It was then a matter of ensuring the bottom plate was on the chalk line and then nailing it off. With the bottom plate nailed, we could then tie it into the adjacent wall, ensuring everything is level and plumb. I removed the temporary top plate and then attached the real second top plate allowing it to tie into the other wall to lock it all into place. With the top plate attached, we then nail a 2x6 to the opening as a safety rail. With the lakeside wall complete, we turn our attention to the front side of the house, as this will be the bathroom and have a window in it. We nail the bottom plate to our chalk line and then lay out for the studs and window opening. With the top and bottom plates cut to length, we could then use my homemade jig to lay out the studs on the 16 inch centers.
While Catherine was continuing to lay out the lines, I was building the header for the window, which was basically three 2x10s nailed together with uh, some sheathing in between to bring it to the full width of the 2x6 walls. With all of the studs nailed in place, I could measure to cut the jack studs that go under the window header to carry the load. While I am cutting these studs, why don't you take a moment and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for subscribing, we really appreciate it. With the window sill in place and the cripples nailed underneath it, we were ready for some more zip sheathing. While I rip a small strip off the bottom so that it will overhang down to the rim board, Catherine tapes the bottom edge so that it won't be exposed to the concrete. It's then a matter of lining it up with our chalk line and nailing it off.
we put this other sheet on bob that is intended for the bottom corner and we will install it after the wall is stood up as it extends out to the other wall that is already up to help tie it into place. We measure and set up the lifting straps that will be used by Bob to lift this wall into place. With the bathroom wall installed, leveled and plumb, we could move on to the next exterior wall that will separate the laundry room from the bathroom. We first start by pulling the tarps off the wood pile and loading up Bob with the lumber that we need. Like every wall we build, it starts with nailing the bottom plate to our chalk line, setting a top plate, and then laying out the wall with my homemade jig. This wall has no doors or windows, so it is an easy layout. With the diagonal measurements equal, I could then put a nail in the top plate at both ends just to keep it square while we install the zip sheathing.
Another wall built, stood up, and level was worthy of a high five. Here I am adding the second top plate to the bathroom wall that also ties into the wall we just stood up. We now move on to the other side of the house and build the wall that faces the lake and where the dining room will be. It will have a large 8 foot by 8 foot patio door and require a triple LVL to carry the load of the trusses, just like the bedroom wall had. Here I am nailing up the L corners so that when we build the perpendicular wall, it will have something to nail into. The bottom plate had a twist in it at this end, so I was using a pipe clamp to pull the top in line with the bottom so that the studs would sit flat when nailed to the plate. With all the studs nailed, we could then cut the three LVL beams to length and then nail them together and install into place. With everything nailed together, we could then check the diagonal measurements to ensure the wall was square. A chalk line as a reference location to install the zip sheathing to, 
and then we could try and lift this heavy wall into place. With the triple LVL header and the zip sheathing, the wall was just too heavy to make that transition from having it underhanded at your hips to get under and lift it up past our shoulders. Luckily, we had the sawhorses there, so nobody was hurt. We came up with the idea to set up a longer 2x6 that will help make the lift easier. Once the wall was lifted and rested on the 2x6, it made the lift much easier as the wall was already at our shoulders and we could lift more with our legs. With the wall stood up, it was a matter of checking for level and using the long 2x4 bracing to lock it into place. We could then put up a safety rail to ensure nobody fell out the door. With the dining room wall towards the lake complete, we could now turn our attention to this longer wall that separates the house from the three season porch. This will be a screened in room that we can enjoy in all seasons but winter as it won't be heated. It will be great to sit out there and enjoy morning coffees, eat meals, or have an after-dinner drink.
With the top and bottom plates cut to length, it was now a matter of laying out the stud locations along with determining where the window and doors will go. Once we determine the height of the door, it's a matter of cutting two jack studs for each side of the door to support the header. We also do the same for the window. I cut three 2x10s to length and sandwiched some sheathing in between to pack it out to the full width of a 2x6 wall. We could now determine the layout of the window and determine what the length of the jack stud should be.
Grab some more 2x10s and cut them to the correct length to make up the header for the window. We had to remove the one 2x4 brace holding up the wall as the one we just built needs to stand up and then slide 5.5 inches to form the corner. I prepped to get ready to start lifting the wall and then realized that I didn't put the windowsill and cripples below it. I kind of jumped the gun and got excited to stand up the wall. Since the wall is 28 feet long, I didn't want to add any more weight with the zip sheathing, so we decided to add a couple of 2x4 
diagonal braces to hold the wall square while we lift it up and get it into position. With the wall lifted and a couple of braces attached, I could go along with the sawzall and cut the nails that held the bottom plate in place. This will allow us to slide the wall into position. To then go along and ensure the bottom plate was on the chalk line and nail it off. We took the temporary bracing off the outside as that will get covered with zip sheathing as it is considered an outside wall. The top of the wall had to push out and I quickly realized that I put the brace up the wrong way. Instead of pulling from the bottom, it is easier to put the brace on the other way and push instead. Another wall stood up, leveled and plumb, deserves a high five.
This is where I'm going to end this episode. Come back and check out the next one as we continue the Lake House build series. Please drop a comment below, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.